For the past several months, we've been very fortunate to have uh, featured Steve Sexton, the president of the Sexton Advisory Group, on the show each and every Tuesday to share some very important financial information and investment advice that's in our Money Minute segment. Well, Steve has covered so many important topics that uh, today we invited him to come in live here to share some of those financial issues that are on people's minds right now. So, Steve, good to see you. Good to see you, too, Mark. Now, one of the things that uh, we've been talking about here is financial planning and how it really has to fit an individual's needs or the, the plan isn't any good. That's correct. It's all about somebody's personal financial situation. And I'm going to give you one example. Uh, we were just referred a client. He... Um, just got a divorce. He never made any financial decisions whatsoever and he went over to the bank. The gentleman of the bank says, you know what, if you move your money here, we can get you better merchandise, get you better returns. He says, okay. But what he didn't realize is because of the, because of the change, it cost him $63,000 in taxes from long-term capital gain buildup. And on top of that, he moved it over into mutual funds that had A shares, and they have front loads that cost them another $35,000. So these are upfront fees that you have to pay when, oh, you, yeah. when you buy these mutual funds. Yeah, and you know what? If there was, if you just asked the questions to understand what was going on with the tax return, where the basis was with the taxes, and to understand the portfolio, you would have understood there's losers there, and you could have off sold off the losers to off offset the winners, and that $63,000 tax bill would have dropped to fifteen. If he had just said, hey, it will take two years to roll this out, he could have paid zero in taxes on the whole, whole transaction. And on top of that, if he had looked into the fees about the mutual funds he was moving into, he could have used no loads or an institutional platform and paid zero fees. So this $100,000 cost transaction could have been zero and it could have saved them a lot of money, and that's just money that just fell through the cracks. And it just fell through the cracks, and it's gone. You're, you're oh, yeah. never going to get that back. So all this time you spent you know, earning interest and, and having gains on your money, mm -hmm. but you just gave a big chunk of it back. You just gave it to Uncle Sam and the uh, investment group. And you don't get a thank you card. No, either. you don't. No, you well, really you, don't. You, they, they shake your hand and say thanks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, I wonder if, if there are a lot of people out there that maybe have you know, 401k plans, they've got a lot of cash and so forth, and they, they get to that point where they're thinking about doing something with it, moving around for whatever reason, uh, you know, a divorce, mm -hmm. one example, uh, changing jobs and so forth. There, there really are some, some minefields out there that you need to tiptoe through, and you need some expert advice. Oh yeah, you know what, here's another situation. I have a, um, well, they came to us. They have four rental properties. Three of them are on 30 year fixed, one's on one of those adjustables. Right. Uh, they have about $30,000 uh, sitting aside in case of emergencies. And in October, they went and said, I want my money out of the market. So they moved into four different investments. And it turns out these investments are a little illiquid. The problem is, is they didn't ask the questions to understand their situation. That last rental property I told you about has that adjustable. Guess what, it just next month. The payment goes from about $1,800 to almost seven thousand dollars a oh, month. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, it hurts. Now here's the thing, that thirty thousand dollars, it's gonna last about five, six months tops. Right. The investments they have are illiquid. There's four of them. Meaning you just can't you can't turn them into cash quickly. No, okay. basically they're gonna be able to get an interest return, but that that puts them in a bad situation. Now if they had asked the questions, what can I do to put myself in a position to not harm myself in the future, all they had to do was buy down the loan about $50,000, which they could have easily done, and refinanced the loan and been in a 30-year fix and it wouldn't have had a problem with them. And then they could have put their money into some sort of investment that wasn't in the marketplace. But now they're in a situation where they can't get to the money. If they do, they're going to have a severe penalty to get to that money or they won't be able to get to it at all. And they might even have their house foreclosed on because they can't afford to keep the house in that case. Well, what's the biggest single reason for these mistakes? Is it carelessness, lack of knowledge? I mean, are there, are there unscrupulous people out there taking advantage of some of these people, knowing that if they get them to put their money in certain places, they earn a commission? I mean, what's... Well, some of the, it has to do with some of that, but the big thing here is this. You need to ask the questions in order to understand your personal financial situation. One thing I didn't tell you, which is the real kicker, is this couple actually fund her mom's long-term care in a facility. They're not going to be able to do that now. Wow, so, so the best laid plans, they, mm -hmm. had it all, they thought they had it all figured out. So the key here is we want to ask the questions. If you have mortgages, you want to know when they come up. If, if, you're, uh, if you're intervening financially on behalf of kids or parents, 
You want to understand how that affects you. What are your hobbies? Because all those things play into what decisions you make financially. And then you want to take a look at the, tax, the taxes when it comes to your income plan. Like I said, Mark, it's all about asking the right questions to understand the situation and determining what investments would be in your best interest, not only now, but in the future. For example, the future, taxes. The 15% tax piece with capital gains, well, if you're in a 15% tax bracket, hey, it'll stay 15%. If, it, if you're over, it's going to go to 20. And you know what? If you're in dividends, you're paying 15% now, but you're going to pay almost 40% in 2013. So if you're not planning for those things and looking at it in a forward proactive manner, you're in, you're, you're in tough spots. So it's time to start thinking ahead. Well, it's always time to start thinking ahead when, it, when oh, you're yes, talking it about your money and trying to stay one step ahead of it. That's where the Sexton Advisory Group comes in. And Steve is offering, again, these free seminars. I don't know how you can beat this. The next one, Thursday, March the 17th, 4 p.m., Palo Mesa Resort in Fallbrook. Then one coming up on Tuesday the 22nd, another one on Thursday the 24th. So please, please take advantage of that. Give Steve a call at the Sexton Advisory Group and get your spot reserved. Again, those seminars are absolutely free. One last thing. If you go to the workshops or you can call our office, we'll help you understand the questions to ask in your situation so you can make the prudent financial decision for your situation. For you specifically, and that's the key. Steve, always good to see you. Thanks, Mark. Good advice. Thank you, sir.